when you first saw the Bluegrass Album Band live, what, what was the first that went to your mind? As, as far as the Bluegrass Album Band, Mills... Yeah. Well, I, Jan, I cheated uh, because the Bluegrass Album Band came into Asheville. And I don't know if they, if some were flying or some were driving or whatever, but they all came in and their, the meeting place was at the Union Hall in Brevard, uh, well, uh, Pisgah Forest. <clears throat> and okay. at the time I was working in Gatlinburg and me and some friends jumped, Milton told me they were coming in. So me and some friends from up there jumped in the car and we come to the Union Hall in Brevard. And um, they had a, a a welcoming party there in the Union Hall, so that was that was my introduction to to the Bluegrass Album Band. As I said before, this is the big one, and this is what you've been waiting for. We're going to get on with it here in a little while. This Bluegrass Spectacular is a project that was conceived by one Milton Harkey several months ago.
play a guitar that f***ing hard. That to tell you the truth, you're on stage with me. The first time I experienced a bluegrass album band rehearsal was at IBMA in Owensboro, Kentucky in 1986. I was there with my good friend Milton Harkey, who had booked the band on several occasions at his Noel Lawson and Quicksilver Family Style Bluegrass Festival at Denton, North Carolina. Besides that, Milton, who, by the way, came up with the name Bluegrass Album Band, put together an 11-city tour in November and December of 1983. Milton had a suite at the Executive Inn, and the band came over to go through some numbers in preparation for their live performance at the English Park, where the Fan Fest was held. As soon as they started playing, I was struck by how light everybody's touch was. Sitting there on the couch, surrounded by Tony Rice, Dole Lawson, J.D. Crow, and Mark Schatz, was a fantastic experience. I had only been in this country for a couple of months and had to pinch myself to just confirm, I guess, that I, I, I really was there. Yeah, I mean... I just, it's the truth. Yeah. You know, you can overdo it. A guitar is not meant to be pushed, but so hard. And if you step over the line of pushing it too hard, then you start to lose the tone. The music was incredibly powerful, just on their epic recordings. The dy dynamic range was striking. Uh, it was never too loud. What I learned from witnessing this is that volume and speed are not to be confused with drive. Unfortunately, Bobby Hicks was not part of that 1986 IBMA event as he was out playing with Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder at the time. You don't get the chance to uh, pick together too often, and, uh, but in, in the future we're, we're looking at trying to do a volume five, if we can, everybody can get their schedules to coincide. And, uh, and at some point in time you may see maybe a mini tour come up that we may do uh, maybe a, a tour of some kind. Uh, we had hoped that uh, Bobby Hicks could be here with us today, uh, premier fiddle player, but uh, Rick and Sky has got work and uh, he couldn't be here. So. <laughs> On behalf of J.D. Crow, Jerry Douglas, Mark Shatz, myself, and Tony Rice, thank you for being with us. We'll close out with Just say good night to you and God bless you. Somebody has committed me to doing this, so I gotta do it. <laughs> Some twenty odd years ago, ran away for the first time. I'm twenty four years old, a pre-born man. 
In 1983, the Bluegrass Album Band went on a tour that took place between November 24th and December 4th. Here's the audio track from the opening night of the tour. Veteran radio announcer and radio personality Chuck Webster from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, here introducing the group to the people at Myrtle Beach. They're starting their uh, tour, and this is, matter of fact, their first day on the tour, the first festival right here in Myrtle Beach that they'll be playing this year, beginning a, an 11-day tour that takes them from Myrtle Beach all around the country, winding up in Boston, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to introduce to you some superstars of this business. Tony Rice, J.D. Crow, Doyle Lawson, Todd Phillips, Jerry Douglas, Bobby Hicks, Terry Balcom, the Bluegrass Album Band. <laughs> Kick it off, JD.
drinks up in your pocket whenever you are looking for a dime. Since everybody in the album band was involved in other groups as their primary gig, it was a challenge to get everybody together for some of the tour dates. As a member of Buck White's family band, or the Whites, uh, Jerry Douglas was only able to make it to some of the shows, but not all of them. Banjo icon and then member of Dol Lawson and Quicksilver, Terry Bauckham, filled in and played some mighty fine fiddle on the shows when Hicks was out on the road with Skaggs. Milton had a suite at the executive inn and the band came over to go through some numbers in preparation for their live performance at the English Park where the Fan Fest was held. Now every time I 
get the blues. I bought the soles right off my shoes. I don't know why I love her so. That gal of mine lives down the road. Farm from the hog lot to the barn, from the barn to the rail, he made his living by carrying the mail. Now, anytime you want to know where I'm heading down the road, to get my girl on the line, you'll find me there most any old time. A little girl named Pearly Blue About so high and her hair is brown Prettiest thing boys in this town 